Here is a physics question. Um, a hockey puck, which I've already drawn here, is hit with a stick, slap shot, and so in that case, it's hit when this puck is already going 8 meters per second, and it ends up going 40 meters per second in a time interval of 3.33 times 10 to the negative 2 seconds, so a very, very short amount of time. And the question is, how far did it travel during that time? Now, I'm actually going to do this two ways. I'm going to do it the way that I think makes the most sense. Okay, And we're trying to find delta x here. So one thing would be to say, okay, well, what about this? What if I said v average in one dimension is delta x over delta t? Well, I know delta t. I'm looking for delta x, but I don't know average velocity. But hey, I can find the average velocity. v average is going to be equal to the initial velocity, v1, plus v2 over 2. It's just the average. So that's going to be 8 plus 40 over 2. That's 48 over 2, which is 24. You can put that in your calculator. Now over here, I know the average velocity. I can solve for delta x. Delta x is going to be v average delta t. So that's going to be 24 meters per second times 3.33 times 10 to the negative 2 seconds. And you'll notice the seconds cancel. That's a win, right? And the units we're left with is meters. That's what we want. So now I'll just have to do 24 times 3.33 times 10 to the negative 2, and then that will give me my answer. So let's do that. 24, 3.33 times 10 to the negative 2 times, and I get delta x is 0 0.799 nine meters. So that's not that far, right? That's like 79 centimeters. Um, it's reasonable because that's how far, you know, a human could make this move. So here's seven, we're about at 80. So like that far, right? So you can imagine, boom, hitting it with the stick and it can move that far. But you probably wouldn't play hockey like this because you just look silly. But you could. Now, is there another way to solve this problem? Yeah, there is. So I could also use the following kinematic equation. I could say x, x0 plus v0 t plus 1 half a t squared. How, so I could say it starts at x0 is equal to 0. I want to find, actually I want to find x minus x0. That's my delta x is v0 t plus 1 half a t squared. And I know t, and I know the initial velocity is 8, but I don't know the acceleration. So I could find the acceleration. a is going to be delta v over delta t. So that's 40 minus 8 over delta t, which I'll just leave it like that for right now. And if I put that in up here, I get x minus x0 is going to be the initial velocity. I'll just put in my numbers, 8 times the time interval, 3.33 times 10 to the negative 2, plus 1 half times 40 minus 8 over delta, over delta t, but I have delta t squared on the top. So I just get a delta t up here of 0 0.33. Yep. OK. And let's put this in our calculator. I already know the answer. But let's put it in our calculator anyway. So drop, so 8, enter, 3.33 times 10 to the negative 2 times, 0.5 for a half, enter, uh, 40 minus 8 is 32. I'm just going to do that part in my head. 32 times, oh, that's 0.33. I'm going to 3.33 times 10 to the negative 2 times plus. Same thing. So which way should you do it? Which way is better? There's no better way. The way that makes sense for you is the way you should do it.